Ever since I started reviewing PSAs, I'm sure some of you wondered if I'll get to the biggest one of all. You know what it is. It's Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. Guess I'm allergic. And good excuses, something you never outgrow. It's back to my complexion. When you pounce, let's get PSAs weren't a new thing at the dawn of the 90s, but the one we're reviewing did things a little differently from its contemporaries. It wasn't just going to feature one group of cartoon characters from one show, it was gonna bring them all over for one big collaboration. I know that we're kinda used to this sort of thing, from the Avengers movies to Super Smash Brothers, but this sort of setup is rare back then. It was unique and novel enough for kids to tune in out of curiosity. The main guy behind the anti-drug PSA is Roy Disney. He tried getting his hands on as many cartoon IPs as possible to stick inside a half-hour feature. He also wanted the work to be seen in multiple countries, so he also planned for limited VHS distribution by Buena Vista. And to make each version more unique, there are even pre-recorded segments where different world leaders introduce the feature. And financing this mashup are some corporations you've heard of. McDonald's, the Ronald McDonald Children's Charities Group, and even Chuck E. Cheese. Taiwan's Wang Film Productions also handled animation, although it operated on a major time crunch. You see, it only had six weeks to put everything together, which is half the time required for a 30-minute feature. But somehow, the whole project didn't suffer any delays, and the result is something quite unique. So let's see how a bunch of 90s cartoon characters teach us not to do things in Cartoon All-Stars to the rescue. So I'm using a YouTube upload of a VHS release, and we open with... The Ronald McDonald Charity Plugin. Love lifted me. And nothing else would do. No snarky comment. At least the kids seem happy. Then for the US, you have George and Barbara Bush giving the lowdown on what's to come. Some of your favorite cartoon characters will help you understand how drugs and alcohol can ruin your life. At least they're tempering expectations, so us kiddies wouldn't be too disappointed when the cartoon characters start the preaching. Anyway, we truly begin in a quiet suburban neighborhood, where all our favorite cartoons are only licensed products, at least until they come to life later. We are introduced to our main character, Michael voiced by James Marston, who's trying to steal from his little sister's piggy bank. Morning already? <sighs> I was smurfing like a baby. <gasps> Great Smurfs! Cory's piggy bank is gone! Hurry, my little Smurfs! Cory's been robbed, and we must wake her up! Huh? Oh. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm not late for breakfast. So, this isn't so much cartoon all-stars to the rescue, as it is Toy Story to the rescue. Well, at the very least, the Smurfs start out as a comic book. But I don't get the ALF one coming out of some random desk photo. But then again, his first appearance is in a live-action sitcom. I guess once you dip your toes into the cartoon verse, you're always considered a tune. You want to help track down the thief, Garfield? Hey, going through life with a blue lampshade is work enough. Wake me when the lasagna comes. Let me rephrase that. Do you want to help, or do you want to be lunch? If there's one thing that's worth seeing here, it's the interactions between certain characters. We should have a special with just these two, given Alf's appetite for cats. So besides what we got so far, there's also Alvin and the Chipmunks, who exist inside a vinyl record, a Winnie the Pooh doll, I wonder what Christopher Robin has to say about this, and Muppet Baby Kermit, who is a clock? Sheesh, I hate when that happens. The special aired two years after I was born, and yet I recognize most of these characters and the shows they came from. I'm feeling really old right now. Now even though some of these characters come from merchandise, Others, like Slimer, from the real Ghostbusters, just show up for no reason. Maybe they're from other stuff strewn around the house. We did see a Looney Tunes poster in Michael's room, after all. But that's enough product placement. Where were we? 
Oh right, he's stealing from his little sister. All right, there must be 20 bucks in here, easy. Unless those are all dollar coins, I think you're only getting eight dollars max. So obviously Cory, said the little sister, confronts Michael over what just happened. He tries to talk his way out of trouble and hides a box that the cartoon characters find. What's that funny smell? Marijuana. An unlawful substance used to experience artificial highs. Of course it does have its uses in the medical field, which is part of why people have advocated for its legalization. Though it's also abusable for those who can't use it properly, like teens and children. At any rate, it seems that a total behavior shift is the first sign of drug abuse. While Michael was more open to Cory in the past, he's now unable to tell her anything. So he just storms off with shades in hand. That kid's got a one-way ticket to Nowheresville. Simon suspects drugs. Oh my. Oh, that's bad news. Michael needs our help. Then let's help him. Come on, we gotta do something. Except you, Pooh, because you can't get down without hurting yourself. Later, at the Star Video Arcade, we see Michael smoking a joint, which produces... Yeah, that's it. Do it. Makes you forget all about your sister and your stupid piggy bank. Ah, crap. It's a smoke ghost. Better get your Ghostbuster friends, Slimer. And yes, this thing is literally named Smoke. He's voiced by George C. Scott, who was also Percival McLeach from The Rescuers Down Under. Not quite as menacing as the latter, but still, at least he sounds cool. This stuff's pretty good, but I got something even better. Latest thing. Yeah, I can't find anything on that. And I know some drugs adopt weird names so they can be distributed without suspicion. So while some guys are tempted to try the stuff, the sound of police sirens scare everyone away, including Michael. I didn't know Papyrus was in this thing. This is probably a sign of the studios cutting corners due to the time crunch. Maybe there was an idea to show Smoke in an alternate form, but this was the most they could do at the time. Anyway, Smoke leaves Michael alone for a bit, which is okay because... Honest, I'll never do it again! What's up, Doc? Huh? You're not a cop? Okay, you win. You got me dead to rights. I'm not a cop, I'm a rabbit. Oh, you. Though, how did you make your way here exactly? Jeff Bergman voices Bugs Bunny here. He's the first replacement for the legendary Mel Blanc, who passed away one year prior to this feature. Oh, and just to spoil what wasn't already obvious from the movie art, he also voices Daffy Duck. You were running from a rabbit? <laughs> He's a cartoon! So are you. Though if this is meant to be a hallucination, then that's what you both are. What's this? A joint? And don't worry, this isn't his first time knowing about it, apparently. Mel Blanc had several radio ads with cartoon characters talking about drugs. Along the way, I've heard of some folks getting mixed up with hard drugs, like a smack and downers. So Bug is going to show him what exactly he did to get to this point. To do that, Bugs pulls him into his... time machine? I borrowed it from some coyote. How does a time machine help him catch the Roadrunner exactly? Was he planning to kill him as an egg? Oh, and apparently Michael's been drinking his dad's beer, too. Honey, you probably drank him watching football last night. Or maybe it was Cousin Mel. She and Grandpa were pretty upset after losing Grandma. So when the parents leave, Pooh does what no toy should do. Interact with the human. Excuse me, but why didn't you tell her? Pooh, you can talk? <laughs> of course I can. But now I have something to ask, if you please. Why didn't you say you were worried about Michael, too? If I tell and he gets in trouble, he'll blame me. Perhaps. But what will happen to him if you don't tell? Well, he could be off on his own adventure, learning the meaning of life or something. So here's what we learn. Two years ago, Michael used to be happy and carefree. But he fell into the wrong crowd and started using drugs. He probably knew better at the time, but he probably forgot once he took his first swig. Needed me. All his cares went... No worries, no bothers. <laughs> Everything.
Everyone's got problems, kid. Even us rabbits. The point is, nobody gets everything they want. What's important is what's in here. You know, what makes you you. You gotta believe in yourself. Standard motivational stuff. Always better to believe in yourself than letting everything else determine your tastes. Later on, as Smoke throws Michael's wallet toward this one drug dealer, our protagonist gives chase until a run-in with... Michelangelo? How did you ever get so totally cool? What am I doing down here? Like you fell through a radical hole, dude. You could have avoided it, but you weren't thinking. Come to think of it, that's a lot of your problem. What problem? Drugs, bud. Your brain must be, like, really messed up. And we don't know why he's here or what he came from. Unless there's a TMNT toy in the house, this might as well be the actual Mikey. Speaking of, the artwork cover for the special doesn't feature him. Yet it has Smurfette, who isn't in the special. Back to the story, our mutant ninja turtle sees Michael in really bad shape, so he sends him down this drain hole in the sewer for another PSA about how drugs are bad. We get a metaphor this time in the form of a roller coaster, with Kermit and Miss Piggy riding shotgun. You see, Michael? Drugs can take you up and make you feel okay for a while. Yeah, I'll say. You know, Kermit's appearance makes sense, since we did see him come to life earlier, but where did everybody else go? Oh, and even Gonzo makes a quick cameo to describe the drug trip, in which to avoid crashing, you need to take more drugs, such as the side effects to taking drugs. Where are we now? We're inside me? This is what's happening inside me? Michaelception, am I right? Well, the real Michael hurts himself by falling down after feeling dizzy. This leads to even more cartoon characters. Are you okay? Huh? Now I'm seeing ducks? Oh man, I gotta get off of these drugs. Drugs? Oh, bad news, Michael. Why don't you just say no? Well, I'm surprised anyone related to Donald Duck would appear. How surreal would it be to have Mickey or Donald interact with the other characters? Smoke then tries to get the three ducklings into drugs, and it's here where we get the most memorable thing about this special. The song. There's myriad wild and wonderful ways to say no. Don't say no way. Better learn if you and take him wherever you go. No dice, no sir. If you're pounded, let's get by. Here's a practical. Tigger, where did you come from? And hey, I thought Pooh was still stuck at home. So this song was brought to us by Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, who both provided their talents for various Disney movies in the 90s. Not their best work, but it's kind of catchy, and the animation is at least fun to watch. Now you could say beat it, get lost, get out of my face with that stuff. But that could be tactless. You may prefer cool. Too much homework. It's rough. I made for my baseball game and I'll miss my ride. My kid sister needs me. Oh, hipster does. Gotta help me home. There's no time to kill. So I'll catch a man. Like that guy. Once the song ends, Michael finds himself back in his room. Meaning this was all a dream or something? I guess not, but that doesn't explain how he's home again. Do the drugs give you teleportation powers? Pooh Bear wants to know why you don't talk to Mom and Dad. Tell Pooh Bear to mind his own business. I just want it to be like it was before. Yeah, well, it's not like it was. So get out of here. And if you say a word to mom or dad. Ow, you're hurting me. So he learned nothing. Guess all those cameos were pointless. Okay, not really. Michael is at least quick to realize what a mess he's gotten himself in. But the damage is already done. Smoke then appears to tempt him again. But here comes Alf to turn the tables. I'm in serious trouble. We gotta do something about this. Hey! Hey! Michael then gets sucked into the live-action elf universe where things got real way too quickly. Okay, no, he's in a house of mirrors, which is supposed to show how other people perceive him while he's using drugs. He might think he sees himself as fine, but others may see him as... 
A ghoul? Well, it's not Freddy Krueger. This is you. Pretty pitiful, huh? You see, drugs aren't your pal, pal. They're your enemy. And then he learns just who exactly is in charge of him. Jelly Jiggler! Kind sir. What if I am General Jelly Jiggler? Okay, it's smoke. So while the big bad is toying with Michael, he also appears in front of Corey to tempt her. Open the box, Corey. If I were you, which I'm not, I wouldn't listen to him. Oh, bother! Relax, he's only cloth and stuffing. <laughs> Open the box. Nothing! Absolutely nothing! So now Michael is at the carnival of death, as two of the duck nephews are trying to kill him. In fact, so are many of the other characters. This is just a whole lot of what the hell's going on, as our protagonist is bounced around different places. Must be the drugs! Oh yes, I can see it all! Told you Daffy would be in this special. As part of his shtick of being a fortune teller, he shows Michael the future if he won't stop taking drugs. Behind those doors. I don't think I want to see this. This is crack. Okay, so we just see a grown-up Michael who's still drugged up. And unless he listens to all the cartoon characters preaching their ass off, this is what he's going to become. There's nothing cool about a fool on drugs. Just believe in yourself. Yeah, you're excellent just the way you are, without drugs. After our protagonist figures out how to leave this dimension, we cut over to his little sister, who's just holding the box. Don't you ever, ever, ever do this stuff. But you did it. I was a dope. I was wrong. <sighs> then stop. Please, Michael. I don't know if I can. Face it, kid. We're buddies for life. Whether you like it or not. You don't have to quit on your own. Talk to Mom and Dad. They'll help. This only works if the parents are as understanding as she says they are, but yeah, that is the first step. So Michael gives Smoke the boot. The big bad isn't defeated forever, but our heroes will be ready for his return. Goodness, I thought I was going to miss something important. Well, great. Now the family has to replace all the toys that got lost in the poster art. And with that, the special ends along with a slowed down version of the No song that almost seems a bit sad. Get these words in your heart and they'll help you come through like a pro. If the old you starts to slide, there's a stronger you inside. Well, that's life for ya. So yeah, this was a pretty interesting PSA. It's a good idea to use cartoon characters that kids are already familiar with to push any drug messages, since it's a medium that younger audiences can trust. It also saves time from having to make one's own toon characters, who probably won't be as memorable anyway. But it's a shame that the likes of Winnie, Daffy, and Michelangelo feel underutilized too. Some show up early, say their piece, then disappear for the rest of the feature. It could have been fun to see some banter between toon characters of different properties, just to make this feel less like a PSA. But at the least, the feature checked all the boxes when it comes to messaging. Besides the obvious, drugs are bad theme, it acknowledges that peer pressure is hard to resist, so it shares ways to counteract the problem. I just find it harder to believe that these lessons will stick, since the audience will remember the cartoon character mashup, and not what they actually said. This is kids and teens we're talking about, after all, and I think some of the animation could be touched up a little bit better. A problem that could have been resolved if the production companies had the full 12 weeks to work on the project. Finally, I wish that the feature was an hour long, if only to flesh out the cartoon characters and the story. But still, it's an interesting little product of its time. It certainly feels like a foreshadowing of our current moment, what with our bottomless appetite for big collaborations, team-ups, and mashups. It's worth at least one watch. If you don't mind these old tunes preaching and singing about drug abuse, if you can dig it, then definitely go for it, or else you too will become a drug ghoul. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way. I remember all those wonderful ways to say love. And 
And as you get taller, you'll see Get stronger and stronger, you'll be That's how the world works, kid 